you know, is monumental for us. It's such an important win on our journey and uh, and the passage that we're trying to dig out. So uh, I, I, probably not relief, but um, yeah, re- really satisfied with with the win. Really satisfied, says Luke Beveridge, coach of the Bulldogs, came from behind at three quarter time to walk away seven point winners at 14 16, 100 to 49 93. It was game number 150 for Tom Liberatore from the Dogs, who joins us on a Monday morning. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, fellas. How are you? We are well, mate. How's yourself? Not too bad, mate. Just kicking back. You, <laughs> you're a morning person, Tom? Uh, yeah, I am now. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little, little fellow and stuff, so yeah, definitely a morning person now with a little one. Yes, okay. well you have no choice on those occasions, so that's uh, it changes your life pretty quickly. How's it going, by the way, fatherhood? Uh, yeah, it's good, mate. Um, yeah, you know what it's like. It's, it has its ups and downs, but um, no, nah, it's uh, very enjoyable. So, loving it at the minute. Being a young Libertoro, is he laid his first tackle yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we just... We just we just starting with the um, left and right foot at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the stoppage review, stoppage review, <laughs> <laughs> stoppage craft <laughs> in between feeds. Uh, that's fantastic, great work. Hey, yeah, uh, there's a bit of stoppage craft going on, on the weekend for you at the Bulldogs, and you had nine clearances yourself through 26 disposals in that game. Uh, what, did you ever think you had that game in control, Tom? Second quarter, you got away to a bit of a lead before a couple of late goals got them back into the contest at half time. But did you ever think you had that game in control? Um, I think we had parts of it in control, not completely, but um, there were moments in the first quarter where we had a lot of the play, a lot of the ball. Um, yeah, in the second quarter, I think maybe Bond kicked that snap. Uh, then we had moments where we should have put one on the scoreboard, I think. I might have missed one at that point too. And then we had, yeah, we just sort of let them back in a bit because of our errors. So, yeah, not completely, but um, yeah, I think certainly the second quarter will Almost in it, almost fully in control, and then we just, we just sort of lost grasp here and there with our with our composure and our inability to to uh, kick goals. Liber Jimmy Bartel here. Firstly, congratulations on, on the 150. It's been a, a tough grind. How have you been able to you know stay resilient, keep getting the body back up to play AFL level? Um, I think, oh, unfortunately, having it done it a few times it's allowed me to like, tweak a few things each time. I, Get injured again, so uh, I think just learning from each different rehab has has uh, helped me get through. Certainly having the knowledge of physios and pretty good staff around me as well. Um, yeah, so I think yeah, just learning from each each new injury um, has helped me get through. I think, um, Tom, when obviously the opposition ruckman was dominating the way Nick Nat was yesterday, how do you counteract that as a midfield? Yeah. What are you telling Steph Martin or Tim English, and and what do you got? What do you? What's the midfield group talking about? Because clearances were still uh, what are reasonably even. You guys actually won by five in the in the clearances. How do you counteract the dominance of, of Nick Nat? Uh, well, I think we have we start with our setup, and we just know where he's going to hit it. Um, and you just got to read the cues of their midfielders and where they're moving, and you got to watch the eyes and where Nick Nat's running. So um, Steph. Did his, did his best in the gate, Nick knows as much, and, and then you got to watch his follow up too because he's obviously outstanding on the ground, and um, yeah, he's not a he's not a small man, so it was, you just got to make sure that his dominance isn't um, yeah isn't followed up by his, his groundwork as well, and then yeah, you just got to keep them sort of on the inside of your inside shoulder sort of thing. So obviously, then it's a more defensive setup around a, a, a stoppage when a, a, a ruckman like that's dominated. Is that tricky for you guys at the moment, consider, considering how much you're dominating ball in, in defensive play to change that mindset? Uh, no, I don't think so. We've always been told to be proactive no matter what in each situation. There might be things here and there in the in the centre bounce or at the stoppers where you've just got to watch their, their zone. But um, the person who's getting the hit to for us um, is always told to be proactive and then the guys around him can can work off that and um, yeah, make sure all bases are covered. Is it different playing, Tom, with the crowds? And I know you play with crowds in a state, but to have all those Doggies fans there, the noise in that last quarter was it was electric. What's it like playing this year compared to last year? Yeah, I even compared to previous years, I, was, I, didn't, I didn't know it was our crowd. Um, 
it was so loud. It was very, very unlike the Bulldogs. But um, <laughs> it was good to have. Yeah, it was incredible. I thought it was certainly gives you an inch um, into it too. When um, I think when Naughty took that mark in the first quarter, and uh, the last quarter, sorry, he took that. It was the first or second goal. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, when we certainly noticed the crowds in those sort of games, and yeah, it was certainly helped us. Build momentum in the last quarter, for sure. Without sort of being too deep and meaningful at twelve past eight on a Monday, do you, do you have a greater appreciation of the fans and of the game playing this year compared to what happened last year? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, there's nothing nothing better than walking out there uh, and compared to walking out to um, fourteen fans at Metricon as <laughs> <laughs> um, and then going back to a, going back to a hotel. So I think. Um, yeah, definitely. You can definitely see, uh, feel that now, especially after yesterday. Now, we were talking before the news about Marcus Bonampelli. He had an amazing game yesterday. What, what's he like to play with? Um, oh, he's incredible. I think the, I think the word's probably... Um, it's mostly respect and, and a little um, you know, inspiration too, I think. Playing alongside him. He's pretty special, and um, yeah, he certainly just you just follow his example, and um, yeah, he makes us. Oh, I don't know, yeah, it's hard to describe. But he's just completely unbelievable. I think sitting on the bench yesterday, when he kicked that second, uh, he kicked the goal from uh, just outside fifty. I think it was the third quarter. Yeah, we were all looking on in all sort of thing. So um, yeah, to have him as you, as you skip out, um, yeah, it's pretty special. So those last couple of minutes, obviously, it was it was pretty frantic out there. You have to get the goal to take the lead, then you've got the lead, and then you're trying to hold on. How often do you practice those different scenarios through training? Uh, yeah, we run through them fairly regularly. We did we did it on Saturday morning actually, just quick run through. So um, uh, yeah, it was yeah glad we prepared for it because um, yeah we had to had to look to it too, and we, we responded pretty well. I thought. Especially in that in that last two minutes where we managed to to pinch another one, right? So I think yeah, we showed diligence with the defenders and the and the forwards and the wings to uh, organise that straight away. Um, it worked out well. So good Friday um, coming up against the Kangas. So I imagine the coach gets a bit edgy with these sort of with these sort of games. Has he has he said much to you since uh, the weekend, since the performance last night about what's coming up on Friday? Yeah, uh, not just yet. He, he used to he likes to just wait. We, especially after a win, we just we'll try to soak it in a bit, and then um, yeah, we'll, we'll look to it on on Tuesday, I reckon. But yeah, historically we are uh, yeah we we tend to make hard work of these games, but um, yeah, I'm sure we'll, look, we'll be looking forward to the challenge. I think. And the slot itself, Tom, um, the Bulldogs historically don't get a lot of marquee uh, timelines and and spots in the calendar. Uh, this is a a real feature. It's become a real feature in the last couple of years. Is it important that you do put it your best foot forward on these stages? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's just as important as any other week. But um, it's certainly more of an enjoyable build up and something to look forward to. Um, it's a pretty special game with especially a good Friday feel. And um, we went to the we went to the hospital last Wednesday as well. So it's certainly um, enjoyable game on a on a deeper level too, so I think it'll be, be um, yeah good fun for both teams. I reckon we'll, there'll be plenty of doggies fans out there keen to get involved, get there and see how much fun you're going to have against the Kangaroos on Friday. Good luck to you, Tom. Congratulations on 150 games, a great achievement. I'm sure there's plenty left in the tank. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Go get them.